All right, so I have a 24 volt uh, uh, battery system. So all of my appliances that run on DC have to be 24 volt. Um, you know, the most prevalent of which are my light bulbs. Now in these fixtures here, I have seven watt LED light bulbs. I'm gonna show you one right now. That's what they look like. There's seven LEDs inside. Um, these are very expensive. These seven watt bulbs, which are basically, I don't know, maybe equivalent to like a 50 watt incandescent bulb, something like that. They, um, they're $45 each. I gotta buy them from China. I gotta wait a month for them to come. Not, not a common item. Now, if I was running a 12 volt system, I'd be able to get, not only would I be able to have a much wider um, selection of possible bulbs to buy, but they'd be at least half the price. Um, I was very, you know, there's only like a couple different places from China where I can actually get soft white um, uh, 24 volt DC bulbs that actually fit in this size form factor. So I, I would buy 24 volt compact fluorescents, which are significantly cheaper, but they don't have a small enough form factor to fit into a lot of my light fixtures. So that is the sole reason why I'm spending so much money on these bulbs. Now, um, the other considerations to make with a 12 volt versus a 24 volt system is uh, voltage drop over, over long runs. So if you have cable runs that are over uh, like 75 to 100 feet long, then you might want to start considering, say, so, okay, you know, maybe I'll go with a 24 volt system because it's more efficient over long runs. Well, most houses, most small houses don't have runs that are that long. Um, and if they do, they're right around that, right around that number, maybe even up to 200 feet. But the thing is, is that, you know, the, even the voltage drop that you get over that distance is pretty nominal and it's not going to make that much of a difference. So, Having a 12 volt system, I think is totally feasible in houses, um, in pretty much any house, unless it's enormous. Um, and, uh, and you're just gonna have so much more variety of appliances. For example, not just light bulbs, but um, refrigerators, pumps, um, anything else that you're running on DC, you're, there's always gonna be a bigger selection and it's gonna be less expensive at 12 volts because it's more common. So there is an instance where doing higher voltage, having like a 24 or 48 volt system is actually preferable. And it's something that I might actually do in the near future um, if I build another house. Um, and that is if you are not using DC uh, electricity in your house, which basically, you know, at this point in the Earthship evolution um, with building codes being enforced more now out here, uh, Earthship Biotexture is not even using nearly as much DC as they used to. At this point, they're using DC for the fridge, um, for the greenhouse lights, and the pumps. That's it. Um, so, you know, obviously, the advantages to running DC or that versus AC is that with AC, you have a loss factor with your inverter. Um, you know, it's anywhere between like a, a five to like eight percent loss, I think, on average of electricity that you would not incur if you were just running straight DC. Another downside to AC is that with your inverter, like you're relying on that another piece of uh, complicated equipment to that has to not fail in order for every for your house to function properly. So, if you start if you put everything on AC, you know there is the possibility if that inverter fails, you know you lose your fridge, you lose your lights, you lose your pumps. The idea with keeping your fridge and your at least some of your lights and your pumps on DC is that if your inverter fails, you still have a fridge that's working, you still have water, and you still have light. And those are essential things. Um, so you know I'm considering making the move to using full on AC. Everything's cheaper, more, you have much more of a selection, everything, you can get anything anywhere. You can go to Home Depot and get all your appliances and your lights. I mean, that's, that's, there's Home Depots everywhere and that's really convenient. And uh, there's a lot to be said for convenience and inexpensive stuff. So, um, you know, the way I would deal with that is to have a backup plan. You know, like uh, I would either always keep money aside to get an, another inverter um, or I would have a generator available that has an inverter built into it that uh, in case of an emergency, I could at least run the generator. Now, I'm not talking about buying a cheesy little inverter. You know, I'm buying you know, a 2,500 watt Outback inverter, which are very reliable. So the chance of your inverter dying, you know, 
is pretty negligible. You know, you have you have a good 10, 15 years before you're even in, in danger of like, you know, equipment starting to starting to fail on its own just because of age. So, you know, if you're going to go full on inver uh, AC, definitely have a backup plan. Um, but here's the advantage to running higher voltages at AC. Uh, inverters run much more efficiently. There's less loss when you run higher voltage systems. So the higher, the better. So if I was not running any DC appliances or any DC lights, any DC pumps, nothing DC, I would invert everything. I would configure my battery system to be 48 volts. And then I would run that all to the inverter. And that would be, I don't, you know, unfortunately, I don't know exactly how much less loss you're going to be dealing with, but I do know it's more efficient, and that's why you go with higher voltage.